right. If you heard something said, the intro's playing. Uh, well, that's uh, my wife's uh, saying that. Uh, you hear the engineers back there. She forgets that we're uh, sometimes it goes on live here quickly. And um, Alex, how you doing? Uh, <laughs> we just had some little hiccup issues, and I had to go and um, tell this thing, no, I don't want to do this no more. And it says, okay, do this. And right now I'm kind of rambling because I'm trying to sh go share this real quick. And um, that way they can see it on another channel. And uh, I got so many buttons I got to push like that. I got two keyboards here. And sometimes what happens on these keyboards is I'm sitting here just typing away and think I'm doing extra good. And guess what happens? <laughs> Wrong keyboard. <laughs> Yeah, it happens to us. Okay, let me blow us up, and now let's get started again. And uh, welcome, this is Jerry McKee with Prime Time, and we had a hiccup, and that's okay. We always have hiccups when it comes to technology. And I uh, hope you had a fabulous Monday. And it's Monday, that's why we have these things. You know, I should have done this on a Tuesday. <laughs> you know, because yeah. uh, Mondays, everybody's saying, oh, Mondays, wow, yeah. All right, we got some uh, events coming up and uh, this March. I was talking to you about the Friends of the Library uh, are sponsoring an annual literary festival as March 17th at the university. And they also going to have some neat costume parties going on there. Tickets at $30. You can buy two tickets for $50, save $10. Bucks. Uh, they have uh, cash wine and beer bar. They also have heavy hors d'oeuvres. And this is going to be at the Main Street Junction Downtown Union this coming Friday, March 17th. And that's at 6.30 to 8.30. So get in your best costume. Um, I don't know what I'm going to I might go as one of those uh, blue men. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that'd be yeah, cool. Yeah. Alex, if you uh, was going to become, uh, you know, as one of these costumes, what, what costume would you wear? Spider-Man. Spider-Man? Spider oh, that'd be pretty cool. Fly. Uh, hey, I could come as a tomato. Yeah, you could. You could. <laughs> yeah. And okay, be sure to go to that, that this, this coming Friday, so get your costumes out and get ready uh, to go. Uh, we got the Junior Charity League Presents Spring Market 2023. Come and shop. Tons of small businesses are going to be there. Friday, March 24th from 5 to 8. Saturday, March 25th from 10 to 4. So last day to sign up will be for the vendors will be March 15th. So vendors get in there and get signed up and get ready for that right there. And also, we're going to have... Join us. This is from the uh, uh, the schools. It's a free family engagement event led by South Carolina uh, Office of Early Learning and Literacy. Uh, they partner with the Union County Schools uh, District. The target audience is parents and children from age to two to five years old. Now, this is, event is uh, March 21st, uh, City of Union at 4 p.m., March 21st at 5 p.m. at Jonesville Town Hall. March 22nd, Carlisle Town Hall at 9 a.m., and March 22nd, Lockhart Town Hall at 10 a.m. Each parent, uh, participant will receive a book from Union County District. So it's called Letters, Sounds Are Everywhere. So hope you will be able to participate in this. Contact the school district, and they will be able to uh, uh, guide you on where to sign up and where to go. And you can always run this back and say, hey, Jerry said this. I can go back and look and see. All right, Miss Union, South Carolina Union Pageant, Saturday, March the 18th. This is going to be in the main auditorium at 6 p.m. It's four crowns is what it's called, Miss Union Freshman, Miss USC Sophomore, Miss USC Union Junior, and Miss USC Union. So go there, and tickets are $5 each and will be sold at the door or at the student services. Hey, I, I encourage you to go. Uh, the University of South Carolina here in Union is fantastic. Uh, it's got a lot of opportunities there for our students. And uh, go get your crowns and get your person that you're going to nominate. Let's get them crowned. I see. I seem like I had. Um, oh, yeah, they wouldn't let me in the pageant. That's right. I said something about ugliness. And yeah. um, I dressed in a red dress one time. Did you know that? No, I didn't know that. Oh, yeah, yeah. I dressed in a red dress. My wife burned it after I wore it. I yeah. thought it looked good on me. Uh, it was a womanless wedding I was in. Yeah. And uh, I thought it looked pretty sharp. But she she just never wore it again. She said she wouldn't can't look in that dress and see her in it. Yeah. She sees me. 
So anyway, Miss Union, South Carolina, let's uh, page it. Let's uh, participate with that. Rose Hill Plantation State Historic Site presents sewing, not just women's work. Ah, can you sew? Oh, no. Oh, me neither. Uh, how can you put patches on? They surely didn't name me patches. <laughs> Another song. Uh, this Saturday, March 18th, this is a workshop at 1145, 1 at 1 p.m. and 2.15 if you want to learn how to sew. Uh, do you know how to sew on a button? Well, a lot of people don't. I'm one. Snaps, yes. Velcro, me. How to fix a hem? Hmm. Join volunteers from the Newberry Museum to learn some basic sewing skills. The free 45-minute sessions are open to everyone from ages 8 to 80. Whew. Well, I've all learned that 80 part. The workshop will be take place on the second floor of the guest mansion. Light refreshments will be served following the session. Reservations required. You can call 864-427-5966 to reserve your spot. Uh, I give them a call if you want to learn how to do it. A bachelor's, there you go. You know, if you're uh, always looking, you know, I'm, my buttons fall off all the time. Like, you know, pull one off. And my red dress needs him, but she didn't burn it, so I don't have it anymore. So, well, you know what? Uh, we're going to uh, come back here, and we're going to get Alex on here to get my, my face off of here a little bit. But uh, first, we want to uh, go to our sponsor and commercial, Kirby's Cake Shop. And they have great catering, too. They cater all around our county. So, let's listen. Union's number one choice for sweets and dinner is Kirby's Cake Shop, 1222 Duncan Bypass Union. Open Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday at 10 in the morning, closing at 5.30. Saturdays, 9 until noon, 427-5779. Again, the number, 427-5779. Baked spaghetti, salad, bread, dessert, and drink, a mere $9. Nathan's all-beef hot dog plate, two dogs all the way, a bag of chips and drink, $7. Taco salads, Baked spaghetti, delicious cakes, cupcakes, cake squares, freshly baked and ready to go. Kirby's Cake Shop, 1222 Duncan Bypass, Union, 427-5779. All right, uh, go get your eat on at Kirby's, and the food is fantastic. The people are fantastic. Uh, you, can't, uh, you can't beat just regular home cooking and and you can't beat mom and pop's places and speaking of mom and pop's places you ever just went into the grocery store somewhere and you seen all these vegetables on there and you get a nice looking apple and you bite into it and you noticed there was a worm there <laughs> but that ain't the bad part the bad part is is a half a worm yeah so and you're gonna hear the dings up oh, yep that's the clocks uh, but we got a guy here, Alex Calhoun, that's a legacy, bringing up the legacy of his family uh, that's been working in produce for, gosh, many years. Alex, how you been doing tonight? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm doing great. And uh, where can people come to see Davis Produce and get some, I mean, I've I seen some pictures of it that you post. You got a, a Facebook page that you post your produce on and all that. You got some other little things in there too that, yeah. uh, that I like. Yeah. Uh, uh, let people know where, where you're, where you're from. Oh, uh, Union, South Carolina. Uh, we are located at 109 Boyd Street, uh, right beside the Monarch Fire Department. So, um, it's, it's right across the hot Monarch High, or Lockhart Highway from the Monarch Elementary School. Uh, and it's in a little tin building and, uh, you'll see the flags and signs everywhere to let you know you're close to it. All right, and, and and if you want to call and ask uh, uh, Alex anything about produce, I'm sure he can tell you. You can call at 864-441-9382 and uh, just give him a call and see, uh, uh, test your knowledge, and maybe he can give you some enlightenment on some how. Uh, because I'm always curious, they don't want me going buying vegetables and fruits yeah. and, uh, because they they know that if I, if I did that, that – well, my wife won't even let me go to the grocery store to buy anything because yeah. I see, I look at the cheap thing of it. I said, whoa, show boots. She won't let me in the house with show boots beans. Yeah. And she said, no, they're nasty. So um, how did, the, how, what, what piqued your interest in taking over, 
your 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 pop. Uh, tell, tell us a little bit about him and and a little about uh, how you got started. All right. Um. So uh, we got really we really got started in October of last year. So about uh, six months ago, probably is when we when I figured out I wanted to do that. Uh, and then we was selling by November. Um, but yeah, I, you know, we say a lot of us Davises that are in produce, uh, we, we just say it's in our blood. It just, uh, it comes natural to us, I guess. And, uh, you know, I didn't know if it was kind of like a leap at first, didn't know if I'd really enjoy it or not, but, uh, I do, I love it. And, uh, it's something I really enjoy doing. Um, and, uh, of course, a lot of people think my Papa Davis right there on the screen, he started it all and he did in our branch of the family, but, uh, History goes way back past that even. A lot of people don't know that. We have history up in Columbia. We got family up in there that used to uh, run produce in Columbia. So a lot of people didn't know that, uh, Pop's cousins. And uh, so Davises have always been in produce even before Pop and uh, before Pop's daddy. Um, now, did you used to go with him to, uh, to, to to get produce? Never got to. I was, I was I think, seven when he died. Oh, okay. I was seven when he passed away, but... Uh, he taught my nana, my ta- nana taught me, and Rick taught me. So it all comes comes well, from him. Well, Davis Fotis has been around Union for as long as I've been here, I know. Oh, yeah. And uh, I think it was your, uh, you, you call her nana, but uh, you, you can say her name. Yeah, Elaine, Elaine, <laughs> Elaine. Elaine Robertson. <laughs> yeah, and because uh, she used to set up at different places like uh, uh, around in Monarch and yeah. around like that and to sell uh, the produce, and she'd be out there. And that hot sun, yeah. I mean, just baking away, but always a smile and happy. Yeah, we enjoy it. We really do. And uh, it's just, like we say, it's just something that comes natural to us. And uh, she did it for a while, a long time. Now, you have a, a, a lot of, of, of fruits and vegetables, as you can see on the screen. Uh, that, that looks great like that. Uh, what do they call those uh, cherry tomatoes on the left? Yeah, it's a uh, you call I call them grape tomatoes and uh, or cherry tomatoes, same thing. Uh, they taste the same. It's just the grapes are a little bit bigger. The grape tomatoes are a little bit bigger, but people love them things. Uh, they buy bags at times. They're really good. My brother eats them like grapes. Oh man, yeah. I can't uh, <laughs> see. I'm not a, I'm not a tomato fan. Yeah. Uh, what 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 happens there when uh, short story is that I was on the phone and I was uh, opening the refrigerator and I said, huh. Cherries. My yeah. wife bought some cherries, but yeah. they were cherry tomatoes. Yeah. And I popped one in my mouth, and I thought, oh, my goodness. I, I thought the end of the world came. Yeah, big difference. It, it, it <laughs> was, yes, yes. It's it, it a sticker shock. Yeah. Uh, now, in, in, in picking out vegetables like this, do you um, uh, have a special way? you? I mean, how can you tell? This right here, I, I know – cantaloupe season's coming up yeah and you'll be getting some cantaloupe and how can you tell a nice fresh cantaloupe because i know your mom has trained you well yeah not your mom your nan. yeah yeah <laughs> because it's called your mom <laughs> she's trained you well too so yeah. <laughs> so how, how do you tell about a good you're gonna get a good sweet cantaloupe well for one thing's for sure if you're gonna buy 200 cantaloupe you want to make sure they're good before you bring them back to Union. So uh, we do have techniques, and honestly, the simplest way is cut one open. Cut one open out of the bunch and taste it. Make sure it's good. But sometimes, nowadays, they used to let you do that back in Pop's day, but they don't let you do it anymore much. Some of them will. Uh, And if they don't, then that's where it gets kind of tricky. But there's still tricks. Um, If you go kind of a little bit later in the morning after the cantaloupes have been out of the cooler for a while, they'll have their smell back. And if they smell sweet, they're pretty good. And uh, you don't want a greener cantaloupe. You want, you know, if you're going to be selling it, you want it to be, you know, yellow. You want a yellow that smells sweet. Um, but if you go early in the morning, they just put them out of the cooler. They don't have any smell, so you're not going to be able to tell like that. Oh, that's good to know. Yeah. Uh, I know a lot of grocery stores do that to keep them yeah. in the big things like that. But uh, when you uh, slice it open, I mean, when someone's buying a cantaloupe, if they're going to use it that day, do you, do you have certain ones that you suggest to them? Because they'll probably ask you all the time, hey, is this ripe, riper than the other ones? Yeah. Because you're going to use, um, you're going to use it that, that day. Yeah. Uh, if it's greener, you know, that's going to, you can, if you don't want to use it that day, if it's greener, you can buy it. And uh, it would be, it would last you a while for it to ripen up a little bit. Uh, but if it's more yellow uh, and it, you smell the sweetness, it's ready to eat. 
it's ready right then and there. Uh, so I do kind of help people with that, and uh, I also help people with their tomatoes. Some people want them to, you know, put in the refrigerator, put them on the counter for a couple of days, and uh, I'll show them which ones will, you know, ripen over a few days and stuff like that. And then some want some they'll eat today, uh, put on a sandwich today, and I'll say, all right, this one right here is. You know, no, no you, do you do you kind of separate those, or do you just go out and pick one? So, oh, yeah, this one right here is good. Or? Oh, I don't separate them. No, uh, okay, they're all mixed in. All yeah, right. and this is my favorite fruit. I love fruits. Strawberries yeah. is my favorite. Uh, I know this is a, an older picture here. It's the strawberries, and uh, I think this came from Florida. Yeah. But you got some that come from South Carolina, right? Yeah, I just got some in this morning, South Carolina strawberries. Yeah. They're really good. Yes, he got some tomorrow uh, after 3 o'clock before, you know, come then because I'm going to get there first. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because I have been there and uh, or went to and they, the strawberries got gone. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's new in the season. Now, being new in the season, are the strawberries uh, – fresher or is it is it a peak time that you can uh is is best it's pretty good right now uh, of course they'll get better and better along in the season and april's when they're really the best uh but they're really good right now i tasted well i've ate a couple today and uh, a lot of times i only eat my strawberries with sugar but i didn't even need sugar with these strawberries it was very sweet very good uh really good yeah really good well that's that's, that's me when uh, uh and to buy some to make put on a cake like strawberry shortcake or something like that, you yeah. know. Uh, I'll take and uh, eat them right then. I mean, I, I don't need the sugar on them if they, if they're good. Yeah. Um, what what other uh, fruits do you have that you'll be coming in season? I know apples and things like that are getting ready to come in. Yeah. Uh, what what other fruits that you that you will be carrying when the season comes in? Well, the big thing everybody's been asking about is watermelons, uh, and uh, they'll yes. be in here very soon. Uh, the market's looking like it's going to be here next week, and if it's not next week, it'll be the next. Um, they say in the end of this week that they'll be in, but I won't get any until next Monday um, if they are in. But, um, of course, if they're not good, I'm not going to buy them, but I'm hoping that we'll have some good ones in next week. But if not, then we'll have to wait another week. But, oh, okay. And it uh, looks like we got uh, Marie. Marie? Let's see. Love Mr. Davis so much. I know, she's Ken. No, <laughs> no, no, no. It's uh, Davis is so much. Uh, uh, You've been in the business for so long, and people are comfortable with you because you know your business, and yeah. and, and you won't repeat business. Mm -hmm. Now on the watermelon, that's my favorite. Yeah. How do you tell a watermelon? Because I hear so many things. I said, well, you can thump it, you know, and hear it like that. Uh, I, I could thump all watermelons, and it sounds the same to me. Yeah. Yeah, I thump mine. Oh, do you? That's what I do, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> I thump them. I, I, I didn't know if it was a little uh, trick with uh, someone says, well, you look at the end of it, if it's certain yellow, whatever like that, or yeah. uh, I didn't know if it's a scientific uh, approach to it. Well, no, nah, I'm not no scientist for sure. <laughs> uh, Pop taught us to thump them. Pop would go up and he'd just thump them, and he had an ear for it, and he'd know right then and there if it was good or not. I mean, he'd cut them open back then, but they don't let you anymore for some reason. Um, but he'd thump it and he'd know if it was good or not. Uh, it kind of looks like that they would let you cut. Like they've got, they came out of the same uh, area, the same garden. Mm -hmm. It looked like they would let you cut it open and see because it, it looked like it would be uh, the same thing. Yeah. Uh, you know, it looks like that, well, you cut this and open, it looks good. Well, surely the watermelon beside it, it's not going to be bad if that's uh, good. Yeah. They don't let you anymore. I don't know why they won't, but um, so you kind of have to use other stuff to do that. The easiest way is cut them open. You know, there's no if or if or maybe's on them. But. Yeah. Well, I guess you could take a chance. So I'm going to buy one. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they probably say you ain't going to buy one. Yeah. <laughs> That's what they'll say. They will. Yeah. But it looks, uh, you know, now, I don't know. I, I've never been to the farmer's market. And is, is it is it huge or? It's, it's pretty big. I think it's in Columbia, I believe you said. Yeah. It's in, it's in, uh, it's really in West Columbia. So uh, it's right past Columbia, and uh, it's 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 very big, um, and it's uh, it's got the way the market works is you know you have a South Carolina line, which is where farmers will set up. It really starts in April. Uh, farmers will start setting up, selling their stuff that they grow, um, and then there's a line in the back where people where um, people will go and get stuff from Florida, or they'll get stuff. And they'll bring it and sell it there. And then there's big, you know, like we call them packing houses, but they're really like distributors. And uh, it's wholesale produce distributors. That, uh, they're fresh too, but uh, we like to buy from the line a lot of times. 
But uh, during the winter, you have to buy from the distributors. So that's what we do. But it, they got about, and these distributors, probably three houses, three of these houses, that's how big they are. And uh, they got probably, I think they got seven or eight distributors um, and two lines, and the lines are really big also. So uh, it's big down there. Well, the uh, well, I, I guess you know people don't realize that uh, then the winter time it's kind of hard to get certain <laughs> vegetables and things. Yeah. And you you have to get from distributors that yeah. goes across the United States and and, and bring and bring yep. then to, because, and that's why probably uh, during dead winter time watermelon so high. Yeah, <laughs> and it doesn't taste the same. It seems uh, like. they they come from Honduras. Oh. Well, they come all the way from Honduras, and they ain't, they're not that good. Yeah, the time they get here yeah. and uh, go through customs on this right here. Now, I, I, now do you like buying uh, mostly from uh, big farms that, uh, that that brings in the vegetables? Do, do you buy anything local from big farmers here? or I'm working on it. Uh, since this is my first spring opening up, I've got a lot of farmers that's been reaching out. And I know some that uh, Rick and them used to buy from uh, when they was doing it, so um, I'm working on it. And hopefully I'll be able to buy some Union County tomatoes and stuff like that from uh, people here. From local like that. Yeah. Well, that's, that's good because it's always keeping the same family yeah. and, and gives them more time actually to farm and and, yeah. and take care of their land where you're actually being a selling agent for them. Yeah. And, you know, that's pretty good. Now, if you want to ask Alex anything, you can call 864-441-9382. Uh, even, uh, he might even give you a hint on how you can grow a tomato. Um uh, I don't know. You might have to train my wife on that. We had yeah. a tomato crop one time on the porch. And, uh, well, needless to say, the uh, one tomato was, we got off our crop after spending $500 on it. And one tomato that big around, you know, yeah. that was it. And uh, I don't eat tomatoes, so she had to enjoy all that right Yeah, there. yeah. And uh, so, you know, we're, we're talking with Alex Calhoun of Davis Produce, and he has uh, uh, got a great produce then and he's there uh during the, the weekday and we'll go get you the times here in just a second but right now we're going to go with one of our sponsors curb Union's number one choice for sweets and dinner is Kirby's Cake Shop, 1222 Duncan Bypass Union. Open Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday at 10 in the morning, closing at 5.30. Saturdays, 9 until noon, 427-5779. Again, the number, 427-5779. Baked spaghetti, salad, bread, dessert, and drink, a mere $9. Nathan's all-beef hot dog plate, two dogs all the way, a bag of chips and drink, $7. Taco salads, Baked spaghetti, delicious cakes, cupcakes, cake squares, freshly baked and ready to go. Kirby's Cake Shop, 1222 Duncan Bypass, Union, 427-5779. Okay, we're back. I uh, told you we'd be back after this short commercial. Only 30 seconds there. We appreciate Kirby's uh, Cake Shop. Go there and get all your catering needs and get some great food there. Hot food and locally owned. And uh, I'm sure they buy some, some vegetables that uh, come from Davis Produce because they're, they're well known. And that's one good thing about Union County. We uh, support our own. And, uh, you know, especially someone's an expert in vegetables and uh i, I guess you could be uh like kind of like uh what was it uh, cartoons come on veggie uh veggie tales veggie tales yeah. yes he could be yeah he could dress up like the yeah yes i got Alex. a helper i told him i was gonna get him a tomato costume put him out on the road oh dance away and get customers in there but i know i know someone you can get that to do really yes <laughs> emily <laughs> <no>. <laughs> Uh, uh, Emily, if anybody knows, Emily is his girlfriend. So we, <laughs> she's sitting over here. She didn't want to get on uh, a, a line or, or see any, uh, anybody to see her, and uh, she's shaking her head. No, she's not getting in a tomato costume. Yeah. But veggie tails, yes. So maybe you can have the uh, the, the kids from the school come by, you know, and have the, here's the veggie tails, but yeah. this is the real veggie tails. Yeah. And I'll. Yeah. Now, uh, Alex, when you go pick up, um. The vegetables and all. Do you, do you have to have you, you have a big truck? Because yeah, I got a full size truck, and uh, we right now during the winter time we're filling it up to the brim. Uh, and so I don't know what I'm gonna do. And I get some watermelons. Probably gonna have to take my trailer. Uh, 
Well, I'm gonna say if, if as the season comes in and more and more you get, you, yeah, you're gonna have to have a yeah. Uh, ne- next thing we'll see with the tractor and trailer going down that way to, yeah. <laughs> to pick up. Uh, I, I did notice in I don't know if they, they are a um, market on down that I-26. They got a lot of trucks come in with vegetables and tractor and trailer and stuff. They they probably a distributor probably. Uh, it's uh, I've got a highway that is 49. Wait a minute, no. You're probably talking about Lowry's over there on the other side of Chester. Uh, no, this is going like uh, towards uh, Woodruff. Oh, towards Woodruff. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, it's uh, but it's uh, I think like their distributors because they have big track and trailers come oh, yeah. in and 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 others, and I just noticed that they do that. Yeah. They they don't set up a uh nothing on the side of the road or or anything like that. I think yeah. they distribute to the others like, and now a question I have for you is that vegetables are perishables they are and how do you do, do, do you see says well these are getting a little age on you run a sale on them or do you um uh what what, what, what happens to the vegetables that goes that goes back because that's money that you're really losing yeah uh we try my best not to let nothing go bad and uh but one thing that does go bad um a lot of stuff sells before it goes bad but one thing that doesn't sell before it goes bad is bananas uh bananas if you buy a box it get you get like 100 bananas in them and it just don't and they'll go bad in about three or four days so it's um uh, it's not something that i sell much but when that happens uh, I'll, I'll mark them down some but they still won't sell before they go bad so we got a man that has pigs so we put them in a slot bucket so they don't really go to waste we feed the pigs and then uh, we sell their fat back later on Oh well, yeah. that's even great. Yeah, and and, and selling uh, uh, and, and you sell other things besides vegetables. Uh, like I said, the fat back, and that and that comes from uh, local also, right? Yeah, preacher Bob Cato. Oh, okay. Preacher so Bob so you, you get so um, now Ed has got another place to get some fat back at. He yeah. loves good fat back to yeah. cook with. Yeah. And um, now you also have another product that's locally made that uh, that you sell. Mm-hmm. Three mill, three horse milling company. Yeah. Grits, yeah. Grits, and uh, is it cornmeal too? Do you sell both of them? Yeah, I try to. Yeah. Okay. We're out right now, trying to get some more in. Are you gonna get that horse to working? Yeah, gonna get. All that right, horse. Mr. Sigmund, get on the ball here. Yeah. We got <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's, he's, he's a good man, like uh, and uh, a big man too. But he's yeah. been doing it a while, and uh, and I did an interview with him, and he was uh, very hospitable and and showed me some things I didn't know about. You know that how they tell from the grit and from the. Uh, meal and all this right here and it's yeah. really 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 fascinating and the horse was nice too so <laughs> yeah. it was so you you sell that product uh, what are some of the other things that you sell there that uh say locally made or uh did i see honey on there one time or yeah, we have honey yep it's made in north carolina so it's not really in south it's not local local, local, local here but it's local uh and uh a lot of people say does it help with allergies it does it helps with allergies and stuff like that and uh it's little honey bears you see them in the grocery store yes yeah oh so we got some local honey there and uh we have different jams jellies chow chow um mild and hot chow chow and now uh, so chow chow is it uh, made locally also it's made up in it's blues market and they're right right past spartanburg oh okay yeah yeah right well see there you go they can come there they don't even have to go to the grocery store and and get some great items that's uh that's made kind of locally and uh it's, it's not made by a big factory or anything yeah. like that and and so they get the freshest ingredients that they put in it and that makes a difference when it comes yeah. to chow chow doesn't it yeah so, it does yeah i know what you can do with the ban- oh yes i got an idea for you when you buy bananas all right okay you take and you put all the bananas that's starting to get a little bit ripe. Yeah. You call Elaine, mm-hmm. make a big pot of banana pudding. Yeah. And call me. Yeah, call you. <laughs> I'll, I'll do it. Yeah, that, that that's what she can do. And you and actually put your little put and sell some banana pudding. Yeah. Yeah, that could do it. That, that way it saves that poor hog, so. Yeah. Then we will be out fat back. So. Yeah. Oh. I don't know. We'll have to think about that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know, other vegetables, I know that they, they uh, got a little longer shelf life. Yeah. Um, again, you can call Elaine and say, look, uh, these are getting a little close to the shelf life. Um, make a big pot of homemade soup. Yeah. Vegetable soup. Yeah. See, uh, very creative. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. Got a new market going. Uh, yes, yes, yes. You can thank me later, yeah. Elaine. <laughs> Go put you to work. Yeah. Uh, now, again, tell people where they can find you at and also uh, how they can come on Facebook and see all the updates and things that you do. Uh, you are a member of the Chamber of Commerce, yep. uh, like we are, and uh, they, they promote and, and, and put things on there that you uh, put on there also to, to showcase uh, your vegetables that you're getting in because you, you have some good pictures of them yeah. and, uh, and and looking forward to seeing some more and we try to share them ourselves as much as we can and but you um, uh, being a, a member to me of, of, of the chamber it, most people think that well it's, it's it's really useless and doesn't like that but they do a lot of things uh, uh, for local businesses and yeah. it's one of the things is 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 sponsoring on their uh on their page too yeah. but uh uh you have a facebook page yeah i do it's uh davis produce and uh you'll see me if you're friends with me on facebook you'll see me sharing all the posts so but it's davis produce on facebook so well, see that's easy to remember davis yeah. produce pretty simple yes yes it's not like it's uh, your community it's your life it's like a you know big tagline yeah. about four miles <laughs> long uh but you can get to it easy and you always contact uh uh Either go by there or contact you, uh, Alex, to yeah. where they can uh, ask you, hey, have you got any, it's like my wife asked you, you still got some of that good corn over there? Yeah. Yes, I do. Yeah. And, and it's by word of mouth. And like I said, with the Davis Produce name, you know it's going to be good quality. Oh, yeah. And we, we known that for years. Yeah. Uh, and we stand behind our product. So if you do happen to get something, it's produce, so you might get something, you know, that ain't good, like a watermelon or something. We stand behind it, and you bring it back, and we'll we'll give you something good. We stand behind everything we we sell. So, so with that apple that I ate with the half worm in it, uh, if you'd have bought it from us, I'd have gave you another apple. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, or you could tell me, said, well, that was our new line of apples. Yeah, you got protein in with it. Yeah, <laughs> yes, that's that's a good one like that. Well, uh, now, Alex, now besides the produce, now you're uh, uh, seventeen years old. Yeah. And and you've taken on this. It's it's really a huge responsibility because it's not just a one day and you go home and and do nothing. It's a constant uh, looking into your uh, stock, your inventory, what you think is going uh, to improve. And and you're doing all this and uh, school, and then you got. Uh, uh, another uh, amazing thing that you are uh, uh, like a youth minister yeah. at Hebron uh, Baptist Church, and uh, you've uh, preached some God's word there. Yeah. And, uh, and and to me, God will continue to bless you. And it's it's almost the both the ministry and and the fruits and the vegetables, and you can kind of relate to how God has a grand purpose and how he grows and feeds us and things like that yeah uh tell us a little bit about uh your ministry part uh of in your life that belongs with the state goes with davis all right uh yeah we i uh i help with the youth i preach to the youth pretty much every wednesday night but uh here lately i've been uh traveling a whole lot preaching so um a lot of wednesday nights and sunday mornings and sunday evenings i'm gone preaching uh in april i'll be preaching two revivals one youth revival one tent revival so i stay pretty busy to stay the least say the least but uh i'm i'm blessed to be able to do it and um uh, but yeah i do that and i run the produce and uh i fill in at the church like i did this sunday i filled in for the preacher and uh you know i just i do what i can and, and to me that is uh a, a great character a character for you because uh, to me, being a young man like you are, it's not too many churches uh, gives an opportunity for a young man to come in at 17, you know, because a lot of times we think so, uh, we look at our youth saying, oh man, they, uh, we're in trouble and all yeah. this right here, but uh, uh, we see you in, in, in the pulpit because I've seen uh, uh, you, you in action there, and the youth love you because you can relate to them because here I can talk to the youth like that, and they're going to say, what's that old man know? Yeah. You know, but they don't realize that we lived a lot through some stuff. Yeah. And uh, and we were young, too, but yep. we just don't tell them. Yeah. See, back in my days, we didn't have cameras everywhere. Yeah. Thank goodness. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, but but now it's uh, you can relate to them more, and, and that's great. And that's what it takes, I think, is to 
uh, uh, someone that they can, they're a peer that they can look at and, and be an example. Now, do you sing in the choir? I do. I sing in the choir, yep. Uh, when I'm there and I'm not preaching, I'm in the choir singing for Sean, Sean Morris. Sean Morris, Sean yes. Morris. He's been to our church and, and sung many times like that. Now, I get sometimes a little seasick when I'm watching the choir. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm going to say, don't you? <laughs> no. No? I'm okay. waiting. <laughs> All right, yeah, yeah. And, and, and looking, and, and, it's, uh, and, and it's about all choirs. When they get into the music, yeah. you know, like that, you'll see one, they'll start swaying. Swaying, yeah. The one beside them, they start swaying. Yeah. And then inside they start swaying. The next thing, everybody's swaying. And, yeah. I mean, everybody's sitting there, yeah, okay. <laughs> Back and forth. But if you watch it, uh, and, and it's really, uh, it, it's great. It's not, yeah. I'm not bashing it like that because it's, uh, uh, it's showing that the music's getting into their soul and it, and they just can't help but move. Yeah. And all. And, and uh, I, I pick with Gabriel on it like that. I says, what are you rocking for? I mean, it's way yeah. back and forth. <laughs> and, uh, but he, he loves coming there and, uh, and loves being in the choir and being part of, of the church there too. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, and that, uh, it makes me very happy that, uh, I, even though I'm a Presbyterian and, uh, <laughs> yeah, but, uh, we, we're all God's children right. and we, uh, we, we all going in the same path. Yeah. And, uh, theological sometimes gets in our way. I think sometimes. Yeah. Uh, but uh, now, where are you going to preach this week, you said? This week? Uh, I don't think I got anywhere this week. I'm going to be preaching in April. In April? Yeah, I'll be in April. Uh, two revivals, one at Glory Baptist, so right down the road, a youth revival, and then one in Simpsonville. I'm pretty sure that's where that church is. So you've been out with David Sinclair. Yeah, David. That's yeah. my cousin, yep. So I'll be down there for him and his youth, and then the next that next week I would be in Simpsonville preaching a tent revival for um, Brother Robert Cato. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So well, that that is great. And the way um, I don't know, just I, I just love the the interaction with Davis Produce and and the ministry because uh, it just the way God grows things, you know, yeah. and and you you see it more when you're in God's word and you see it more when, uh, God comes in and, uh, saying, well, and now I know you don't have any bad days and, uh, <laughs> I don't and, know about that. And, and, and especially in business and things yeah. like that. Everything is so perfect when you become yeah. a Christian. I don't, know. I don't know about that. <laughs> yeah. I know. Well, people, some people think that, that's, yeah. well, you know, I'm going to go to church and become a Christian yeah. and everything's going to be perfect. And normally it's, uh, on the opposite end of it, you know, it's, yeah. it's kind of a, uh, sometimes that devil will get on you and want you to steer you in the wrong way. Yeah. Uh, now I have to ask this question too. Now, when you're buying your produce and, and say you're getting ready to prepare yourself, you make a list what you want, or do you go and, or you look for specific things or are you, uh, looking for things that, uh, on sale or, or I know you got to look at your price line and, and pricing but how do you determine how much you need of one thing and is it a certain thing that sells more or uh, I, and as, to me it would be kind of hard for me to do it because i'm not into produce yeah and th to see what most people buy and now i'll probably get tomatoes right but yeah. other than that uh people do a lot of cooking nowadays yeah and i know my wife does a lot of a lot of cooking and it's real real good and but she buys certain things and she goes and i watch her in the vegetable department you know or something to pick up certain things to look at it uh what what is the i guess a higher selling item that you have that, that most people buy oh uh, tomatoes and peanuts boiled peanuts and tomatoes that's the two biggest things we sell pop pop sold tomatoes like crazy and uh, so uh, i guess that just carried on and uh so when I first started out in November, we bought one box of everything that we was going to start out of. So we, we just bought one box, and that happened for a couple of weeks. But now we're up to, like, when I go on Mondays, uh, I try to add one or two new things each week to the store. Uh, sometimes I'm not able to because I'm so low-stocked on stuff from the week before. Um, but I by now I kind of know what's going to sell. And uh, so, like, tomatoes, I buy, like, four boxes on Monday. Uh, four cases of tomatoes and um, a bag of peanuts, a uh, 50-pound bag of peanuts, and all the other stuff like uh, grapes. I usually buy two boxes of grapes and two boxes of some things and one box of one thing. Uh, it's just you kind of have to learn your spot because produce, you'll sell more more or less produce in the town next door to you. So it's just who's around and 
uh, your customer base and, and what time of the year it is and what the weather is going to be like. Because a lot of people don't know, but weather plays a big role even in the summer. If it's rainy, you're probably not going to sell much. Right, and people don't want to come out no. uh, like that. Now, I, I've went into stores, and, and, and not just grocery stores, but regular stores, and I go in and I say, I don't need a cart. And I go through there and I put a couple of things that in in my arms. And next thing you know, I want something else. And next thing you know, I'm sitting here and says, oh, I wish I'd have got me a cart. Yeah. Now, when you go to the uh, uh, Columbia and you're buying these products, do you have to buy the big box of this and carry it back and put it in your truck and go back? Oh, uh, no. You have to go back and forth? Or, or how, how, how does that work? No, um, they'll load it for you. So, like, when I go to somewhere, I usually buy a bunch of stuff from one place, and they load it with a forklift. So they'll load it into your truck for you. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, I, I was just kind of wondering that. So, man, that would be a lot of trips. Yeah. And you have to be kind of in good shape to <laughs> yeah, carry yeah. boxes and stuff. If I buy, like, you know, not much stuff, maybe like four or five boxes of something, uh, they'll put it on the edge of the dock, and I'll have to take it back and forth to the truck. But other than that, most of the time they'll load it for you. Uh, at most places some places you'll have to if you buy one box you just pick it up and carry it but um they go get it for you and bring it out for you and stuff like that so it, it makes it a lot simpler right way simpler and they, they know how to pack a truck better than me a bunch of that stuff if i did it it'd just be on top of each other everywhere and stuff falling out but they know how to pack it so i used to have big watermelons now they're flat yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. now when you get back of course you got to do all the unloading oh, yeah. and yeah. things and uh now when you do you have do you display them in a in a way that uh, that looks appealing, or do you just set the boxes in there, or uh, how, how do you work that? And because uh, a lot of times people will buy because it looks good. presentation yeah. looks good. Yeah. Oh yeah. We we try to make everything look popping out. I guess so. Some stuff's elevated, and then some stuff's lowered. Um, you know, we put we pile stuff up real high, stuff like that. Tomatoes, we pile them kind of like a a uh, little pyramid thing kind of thing uh-huh. and uh so everything kind of it's just we want it to look good we want everything to look good and taste good but uh we we for sure don't want just stuff laying around and they just go try to find something we want everything to be there and uh, look good so they'll know what to get where from and not have to look around and dig under stuff to get something so do you, you like a lot of vegetables or is it eating wise? I, I like a good many, but some of it I don't. No. Yeah, I was just wondering, you sitting there, you know, and waiting on your customer to come in. You sitting there, some oh, hey, that that tomato looks pretty good there. I'm gonna go ahead and. No, I don't just eat a plain tomato. No, my uh, helper does. He'll pick one up, and uh, he'll just eat it like an apple. He'll eat the green ones like an apple, the red ones like an apple, the yellow ones like an apple. Yeah. I've never seen nothing like it. <laughs> it's it's uh, absolutely nasty doing it that way. Like, uh... <laughs> well, my wife, she likes, uh, and, and, and she could do a commercial for you on tomatoes yeah. and uh, uh, a tomato sandwich with Duke's mayonnaise. Yeah. It's got to be Duke's mayonnaise. Yeah. It can't be anything else. And uh, she can she can just say, I can't wait till those fresh tomatoes come in. I'll slice it up <laughs> and be thick and juicy, and I put Duke's mayonnaise on it. And he said, Oh my God! Yeah. <laughs> he said, yeah. Who are you doing a commercial for here? You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And uh, now, uh, do you sell a lot of like squash and zucchini? Or yeah, we sell a lot of yellow squash. We have really good yellow squash and. Uh, Hopefully, sometime soon, we'll have South Carolina squash in because uh, that's usually one of the first things that start popping up is South Carolina squash. So um, hopefully, we'll have some of that in right now or soon. But right now, we got really nice um, Florida yellow squash, and, and we got zucchini and uh, stuff like that. We got a lot of that. Now, when does the cucumbers start coming in? or are they... The South Carolina cucumbers, it'll be a little bit later on. Um, but we got pickler cucumbers right now from Florida, and they're really good. Uh, it's the smaller ones. Uh, and a lot of people really like them most people prefer them and we got them in and they're really good um you know we'll have a big old box and they'll be gone by the end of the day i have i have this man that comes and he he'll get a big grocery bag full every week once a week and i, I asked him one time i said what do you do make chow chow cook something you cater or something he said no nah, i just like to eat them wow so he must eat them like pickles i guess i don't know I, well does he make pickles out of them? no i asked him that too he just <laughs> eats them so <laughs> that is a lot of cucumbers i like yeah. cucumbers uh i like mine good and cold yeah in the refrigerator and and, and but i just uh that's a lot of cucumbers oh, to eat. Very... he must be on one of those uh like atkinson diets he's on a cucumber diet yeah he must be yeah yeah yeah, yeah. oh wow and uh let's see it's another 
eggplants. Not yet. I haven't Not got yet. any yet. I could have, but I don't know how they'll sell. I, I'm, I don't know if any, too many people that uh, they eat them. Is it purple, correct? Or Yeah, they're purple and got like a green top on it. Yeah. Kind of thing. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, if you're watching you want me to start selling eggplants, let me know. I will. <laughs> <laughs> I've never thought about it deep. Well, I don't know too many things that uh, that you make southern with it to me. I mean, uh, somebody, if you, if you know a good southern recipe – uh, for eggplant, uh, put it put it on here. Well, yeah. I kind of like to see it. I'm not saying I'm going to eat it. Yeah, no, <laughs> you know, I'm not a vegetable person. Uh, do you eat eggplant? No, I've never tried eggplant. Never tried it. No, no, never tried it. Well, you're gonna have to try it if you're gonna sell. It. You got to try every vegetable. Then. <laughs> yeah, I might not be selling it then. <laughs> oh, uh, I tell you what. Well, Alex, we really appreciate you coming here, and uh, we'll we'll be right back right after a commercial from. Yes, Kirby's is our sponsor for today. Union's number one choice for sweets and dinner is Kirby's Cake Shop, 1222 Duncan Bypass Union. Open Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday at 10 in the morning, closing at 5.30. Saturdays, 9 until noon, 427-5779. Again, the number, 427-5779. Baked spaghetti, salad, bread, dessert, and drink, a mere $9. Nathan's all-beef hot dog plate, two dogs all the way, a bag of chips and drink, $7. Taco salads, Baked spaghetti, delicious cakes, cupcakes, cake squares, freshly baked and ready to go. Kirby's Cake Shop, 1222 Duncan Bypass, Union, 427-5779. Okay, we're back again. And if you have any vegetable needs and wanting to uh, expand your cooking skills, well, you can uh, watch Edna Sue's uh, cooking show learn how to cook with some uh, vegetable soup and things like that and use some of these vegetables or you can make it yourself and go down to davis produce and see alex and alex will help you out if you don't know what you're looking for which i wouldn't know if which is which yeah so alex i appreciate you coming and and talk with us about it because people's going to you know ask me says well we're you going to talk about vegetables i said well there's a lot of things to talk about vegetables yeah uh even though i don't eat them uh, that much but you have uh, uh the freshness and and when i like about local produce like this is that people can come to you and ask you a question and you know yeah you, you know about if how fresh it is because i've been in the grocery store before and i've asked you know yeah is this fresh well come in last week <laughs> Or yeah. I don't know, yeah. you know, because, you know, they don't know. They usually nah. hire kids working in that department or whatever like yeah. that and just put them out and you spray them down. Do you, yeah. do you, do you spray them uh, with water or anything like that? Collards. Uh, I'll spray collards sometimes, but we haven't had collards since New Year's. But uh, when I had collards in New Year's, put them in the back of my truck and put ice over them. That's how I did it. Oh, yeah. okay. But we don't just leave it for weeks at a time and just spray water so they look fresh. No, <laughs> <laughs> we don't do that. Yeah, so... No, it's it's collard. Edna loves collards. Are they seasonal? Is, is it just a certain time of year they they come in? Uh, no, they're all year round, but they really only sell at certain points of the year. But uh, you when because when you buy, you have to buy a bunch. You can't go buy three or four collards and then sell them. You have to buy a lot, so it's not it's hard to do that. But uh, during Thanksgiving and Easter and um, New Year's for sure, it's it's collards are in like crazy. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, yeah. I, I knew you, New Year's was. Uh, I think that and Black Eyed Peas. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Do, you, do you get any beans? I can, and I didn't this year. I was gonna get some Black Eyed Peas, but I just never did. But I'm pretty sure this year I'm gonna. Yeah. yeah I'm gonna try it and see what's yeah, gonna I'm happen. Yeah, sure gonna try. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just kind of was curious about that. I said, well, you know, that's a, that's a vegetable, I guess. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Uh, they sell it at the market. The pintos yeah. they sell. Yeah. Pintos, Black Eyed. Uh, we know oh, those the the prices as far as in in the supermarket uh, in the bag stuff like that went real high at one yeah. time, and and I was thinking, well, you know, wow, if you buy the bulk like that and you and you sell in the bag with it and, and it's much cheaper, and, but and I, that's one thing too. Uh, we'll tap real quick before we sign off here, is that the pricing uh, is much cheaper than it is in the grocery store and fresher i think oh yeah yeah um 
We try to keep it lower than the grocery store. Some products we can't, but it'll be worth it because it'll taste a whole lot better. Because you go spend two dollars a pound on something and you get it home and it ain't no good and you'd be glad you spent you know two dollars and ten cent and get home and it's real good right and where this has been kept a good while in refrigeration and, and things and like that in stores you don't know how long it's been there yeah when you know the freshness and they can ask you too they can yeah. ask you well you know is this fresh when did you get this so it's all kind of things that benefit shopping local and coming in and go, asking someone that that knows his product. Yeah, that, that's the main thing. And plus, coming in, seeing someone that's uh, is, is, is doing work for God, and you know, he, he's not going to cheat you. He's not going to tell you this right here, you know, because he, you got a reputation. Yeah. You know, you, yeah, you're, you're in the pulpit, you're in the yeah. in the church, and people watch you. Yeah, and uh, so uh, you know, all kind of benefits by shopping at Davis Produce yeah. versus uh the big markets yeah yeah uh, well we stand behind what we what we sell and we'll take care of you if you happen to get something and it ain't good we'll we'll take care of you and uh hopefully everything you get's good uh and uh we'll take care of all of our customers and we we appreciate all of our customers at davis's all right well alex again appreciate you coming taking time and, and talking with us and uh we'll of course we'll be shopping with you my wife's going to be coming down there tomorrow about them strawberries i yeah. know yes, and sir. uh well, she don't i'm going to send her yeah <laughs> real quick <laughs> uh but i appreciate you coming in and and talking to us and letting us know about your business and being a young man like you are i'm very impressed uh you work with god and, and you're working in a business uh as a young man where uh, we we give up on our youth sometimes too quickly, yeah. and I, I, and that's a downfall on us uh, older people because we think we should be this way or that way. Yeah. And but we'll keep you in our prayers, and we are still uh, we're shopping with you. And I hope everyone shops at Davis Produce, and come on out and wipe them all out. Where he's going to have to go by and get a bigger truck, a bigger yeah. trailer, yeah. and bring all this stuff back in here. There's chow chow. There's honey. So there's things there that you just pick up. So, oh, I don't need to go to the grocery store for this. Yeah. I'll pick this up. Yeah. So. Eggs. We got eggs. You got eggs? Yes, wow. sir. $3.75 a dozen. That's great. That's really cheap for these days. Yes, yeah. I know <laughs> it. I mean, uh, I, I can't believe how uh, eggs really kind of just went out of sight. Yeah. And uh, we had COVID. They had bird flu. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they went on strike yeah yes and uh so well see there you got eggs you gonna pick up some eggs you don't have to run up to the grocery store while you're shopping for your vegetables and are the eggs local uh, also or is it uh they come from the market, market. but uh there's a farm in the united states so uh, it's not local so it's not coming from the honduras no, it's not coming from yeah, Honduras. Yeah, when no. you see the eggs there, they look like an ostrich egg. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> if you want some, I might could get you some. <laughs> yeah, I, I tell you. And then some of the, uh, I know some of the, in the stores there where it used to be large eggs, it seemed like they shrunk. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. You know, so. Well, Alex, I'm glad that you got to talk with us. I'm glad you got to uh, enlighten me and educate me on produce, even though I don't eat vegetables. But yeah. I like to learn about them. Yes, sir. It's educational. Everyone, you have a great time. Uh, we'll have another episode next Monday, and we have a special guest. So look on Facebook for that special guest who it's going to be. And always on Monday at 7 o'clock, I'm Jerry McKee with Prime Time, and we will see you 